Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypercalcemia. Now, um, this is, I don't even know which video this is, but it's a multi-part series where I'm covering the fluid and electrolytes. They don't go in any particular order, but I encourage you to watch the hypos and the hypers together. So for example, hypocalcemia, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia. I don't think you should skip all over the place, but like I said, it's no particular order, but I encourage you to at least keep the electrolytes together. Now, before we get started, guys, please don't forget to like this video. You're going to love it. Just like it now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, and almost daily, you guys can find me uh, covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok. Instagram and Facebook. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started. This video, hypercalcemia. And I wrote here more than 10.2 because your range for, um, did I say hyperkalemia? Did I say that? Hypercalcemia. We're talking about calcium. It's about 8.6 to 10.2. So hypercalcemia, too much potassium, is the potassium level being higher than 10.2. Now, Excess, look at what it says, excess calcium acts like a sedative. So the thing with calcium, too much of the calcium can weaken those muscles, slow everything down, okay? Excess calcium acts like a sedative, leading to reduced excitability of the muscles and nerves. So it weakens the muscles and nerves. It can cause fatigue, lethargy, weakness, confusion, and if it's not corrected, it can progress to the point that the patient's having hallucinations, seizures, and they can even fall into a coma. So um, some common um, nursing diagnoses for hypercalcemia, risk for electrolyte imbalance. Of course, they have electrolyte imbalance. They got too much uh, calcium related to what? Excessive bone destruction. So I want you to think about this, um, that excessive bone destruction, it could be from bone tumor, bone cancer, that type of malignancy, which causes bone breakdown. Well, what makes those bones strong? Calcium. What do you think happens to those bones when they start to break down? Where do you think the calcium goes into the bloodstream? Remember, when we're talking about hypercalcemia, we're not talking about too much calcium in the bones. We're talking about too much calcium in the blood. OK, so um, that bone malignancy, that's a perfect example of how that patient can become hypercalcemic from excessive bone destruction. Look at this risk for activity intolerance related to generalized muscle weakness. We just learned that having too much calcium that can cause fatigue, that can cause uh, muscle and nerve weakness. So with this um, decreased activity tolerance, we're also going to be worried about what safety. If that patient is tired all the time, those muscles and nerves are fatigued, safety is going to be an issue. Risk for injury related to neuromuscular and sensorium changes. And those changes are what? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Confusion, weakness, right? And then potential complication, cardiac dysrhythmias. Because last time I checked, was it the heart a muscle? Your heart muscle. So just think about what it'll do to the heart muscles, okay? Nursing implementations, what are we going to do? Um, we're, going, we're going to encourage the patient to eat a low calcium diet. They already have too much calcium in the bloodstream. They don't need more. Increase weight bearing activity. Why? Well, let me tell you what weight bearing activity does. It pulls all of the calcium that was in the bloodstream. It pulls it out of the bloodstream and puts it back in the bone to make the bone stronger right? That's why those patients with osteoporosis, we always teach them to do weight-bearing activities to get all the calcium out of the blood back into the bloodstream. So that's a great activity. Teach them to maintain adequate hydration. The last thing you want a patient with hypercalcemia to be is dehydrated. What do you think happens if the patient's hypercalcemic and they're also dehydrated? All that calcium, they're going to clump up. And be, before you know it, patients got kidney stones, calcium stones, right? So we're going to teach them adequate hydration, and we want them to be able to also be able to excrete the calcium. The patient must drink 3,000 to 4,000 milliliters of fluid daily to promote renal excretion of calcium and decrease the chances of kidney stone formation. So that is very important that they stay hydrated. Fluids that promote urine acidity 
cranberry or prune juice will help prevent formation of stones. So let me talk to you guys about that. The um, fluids, like they said, the cranberry juice or the prune juice, it's increasing um, acidity. So it's going to keep those stones from clumping up and it's going to keep those stones from sticking to the bladder lining. Okay. What else? We're going to teach the patient about biophosphonates. What do biophosphonates do? Strengthen what? The bones. Get that calcium out of the bloodstream and back to the bones where they belong to make the bones strong. That's important. Patient's going to get IV fluids. We want to make sure they're not dehydrated, but we have to be careful because we don't want to throw them into fluid overload. Look at what it says. Fluid overload can occur in patients who cannot excrete the excess sodium because of impaired renal function. So is that a good idea that we're giving this patient all these fluids, but their kidney's not working so they can't get rid of the fluid? we got to be careful with that. Biophosphonates, and they give you examples of the medications. Pamid, you know, I can't pronounce Pemidronate, I'm not going to try it. Let me make this bigger for you guys can see it. You know I can't pronounce any of these meds ever. There you go. So anyway, biophosphates, they are the most effective agents in treating hypercalcemia, especially when it's called by a malignancy, right? They interfere with the activity of osteoclasts. What are osteoclasts? Osteo, bone, class to break down things that break down bones. Think about it. Again, when the bone breaks down, what is loose and circulating? Calcium. Where does that calcium go? In the bloodstream. What does that cause? Hypercalcemia. So it makes sense that biophosphonates are a great class of medications to give for the patient with hypercalcemia, okay? Because, um, so where was I? They interfere with activity of osteoclast cells that break down the bone. Because it takes two to four days for biophosphonates to achieve the maximum effect, so it doesn't ha happen overnight, it takes about two to four days, patients receive either IM or sub-Q calcitonin for an immediate effect. So yes, they're going to get the biophosphonates, but it takes two to four days before we start to see a therapeutic effect. So in the meantime, they're going to get calcitonin right now so we can decrease the calcium level in the blood. Calcitonin rapidly increases renal uh, calcium excretion. Right away, the patient starts getting rid of that calcium. If it's severe, that patient's life is in danger. We can't even wait for um, the kidneys to help get rid of the calcium. We're going to do dialysis. Dialysis is an option in life-threatening situations. So um, also take a look at this table, clinical manifestations for hypercalcemia. I put a star or I underline the most important ones you guys need to know. Hyperparathyroidism. Just like when we talk about the thyroid, we're talking about metabolism. When we talk about the parathyroids, we talk about calcium in the blood. So if the patient has hyperparathyroidism, they're going to have hypercalcemia, okay? malignancies with bone metastasis. And I explained why that makes sense. The bones start breaking down. That calcium is going to go into the bloodstream. Prolonged immobilization. Patients not moving. It's going to make the bones weak. The calcium is going to go into the bloodstream. That's why it's important to tell patients to keep moving because them moving around pushes that calcium black, black back into the bones where they belong. Calcium containing antacids. Patients taking too much um, antacids with calcium, that can cause hyperkalemia, hyper, hypercalcemia. Signs and symptoms. Again, remember, calcium causes that weakness of the muscles and the nerves. So just think about what happens with the weakness of the muscles and nerves. Lethargy, weakness, fatigue, decreased memory, decreased muscle reflexes, bone pain. Why bone pain? Bones weak now, right? Because all the calcium that was in the bones, making the bones strong, it's now in the bloodstream. Bone pain, fractures, of course that patient's going to be at risk for fractures. And the ECG changes, remember, your heart is a big muscle, so you expect to see ECG changes, shortened ST segments, shortened QT interval, ventricular dysrhythmias, and increased digitalis um, effect. One more thing before I let you guys go, I did bring this to your attention, but it's important to know. But for my 
new followers, those who have been following me for a while now, you already know this. Anything that I underline, I put a star next to, or I put HESI and Clex ATI, same thing. If it's on one, there's a high probability it's going to be on the other two. So for for um the nursing implications that I I put HESI next to it, but honestly, these nursing implications for hypercalcemia, you will also see on ATI, you'll also see on NCLEX because they ask about it a lot. It's important to know what you're going to teach the patient for hypercalcemia. So that list that I went over, make sure you know them. All right, guys, that is it. Very quick video, right? Let me know what you thought about this video. On the next video, I'm going to be covering hypocalcemia, the clinical manifestations, nursing interventions, all that good stuff. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me cover that I haven't done so already. If you haven't done so already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget about those audio lessons on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys will catch me on the next video.